The Mobius Project. Let's talk about it. How did you... Uh, just tell me your thought process behind it. Uh, in, in general, the biggest thought is uh, I released several solo albums. Uh, the first one was 1989. Most of them have been studio... Pro all of them have been studio projects. I've done a few of them. You know, several. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, at, at one point, I got hooked on the Hammond organ again and did, did some trio albums. Some of them were a little larger. But almost everything was done in in layers. Uh, you know, I'd do some tracks, add other people to them. More often than not, end up with here's a band on a recording. The guys had never been in the studio at the same time. Right. It's it's a recording process. It's valid, but it's uh, it's different. Uh, in 1989, I was signed to Gramavision Records, and uh, I went into the studio with. Uh, I think four horns and a four or five piece rhythm section and we just played. My charts are, but we played as a band. I hadn't done anything like that since 1989. It, it just had been a long time. Uh, uh, the only exception possibly was the, uh, the jazz quartet that I do with my brother, the Levin Brothers, and we did record as a quartet. But for myself, I haven't done that in decades. And, uh, I don't know what triggered me to do it. I just decided I need to do that again. And I, uh, I was working on another project and doing it in layers and pieces. And at one point I had 20, 22 tracks in various stages of, of production, <laughs> all incomplete. And I, I just kind of looked at the whole mess and said, I don't like any of this. And you played on some of those tracks. And, yeah. And it, it, yeah. And I just, you know, I'm going to start over. And I just took a bunch of new music, some old music that I wanted to do, and uh, called a group of guys, like you, uh, uh, Nani Assis, Alex Foster, who I've been playing with for, for many years, and I booked a studio and said, let's just do it. And it was. I would, actually, it was kind of cool because this is the first time I actually played with your brother. Ah, yeah. And Tony, who pretty much lives on the road between King Crimson and Peter Gabriel and his own band. He was home for two weeks in December, and I said, I got it, you got to be there. <laughs> and that, that, that's it. Uh, and I thought there was, a, there was a great matchup between you and Tony. Yeah, it was, it it, was fun. It, it was, was actually it was, fun it, playing. It really worked well. Yeah. 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 But now, Mobius, because you had actually called it something else too, the Pete Levin 7? Uh, uh, th yeah, that was drifting around a little, a little bit. It was, uh, I thought, yeah, let me, let me call the band the Levin 7. Right, right. Pretty dumb. Uh, no, that was, I thought that was kind of cool, actually. Really? Yeah, I you thought know, that I, that would be great. You know, our first live gig is on November 7th, <clears throat> 11 7. And then I'm thinking, this is dumb. Don't do that. <laughs> so, Why not? Uh, I, then I was thinking maybe I should, but then the cutting room listed it as Mobius. Right. And I had to chase them and say, excuse me, could you use my name? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please? <laughs> Don't hit me. So, uh, well, maybe maybe there'll be a 11-7 tour well. at, at, at some point. This is the Mobius tour. And, and they started calling it the Mobius Band. and. Uh, Okay, I'll go. I'll Let's go talk a little bit about the music that you did on there. It's a, it's a mixture. The one piece Mobius was experimental, and my idea was to just take a, just something basic, which was a bass line that just keeps repeating over and over again. It's like. Uh, it goes again. That's it. Doesn't stop at all. And I came up with a couple of melodic riffs and I thought I'll just point to the horns or point to say, oh you solo. No, never mind, you solo. And let's just play. Let's just see what happens. And I had pre-recorded the bass line only. 
I had 20 minutes worth of it. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, I didn't, I didn't know what was going to happen. You know, maybe we'd have to stop and start over. And uh, we did pretty well. It's, I think it was a little over 10 minutes. We ran out of ideas, and it just, it just wound <laughs> down. But uh, I wanted to do a whole album that way. And I think, well, you know, maybe I'll be, maybe that's testing people's patience a little bit too much. So, so well, let me, let me, let me ask you a but, question uh, about um, modern sensibilities as opposed to old school sensibilities. You have recorded many different ways. Mm -hmm. Like you had talked about uh, recording from the perspective of having uh, tracks done and having people from all over the world or whatever come together mm -hmm. and not be in the studio at the same time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then you had the process of how we did Mobius, where everybody was in the studio at the mm -hmm. same time. Um, make a case for each. Uh, everybody's in the studio at the same time. They can feed off each other. Uh, I'm playing, somebody does something feed off of that and maybe what I was going to play will change a little bit. Uh, with uh, doing it in layers, uh, as, I, as I said before, it's it's really, I have this concept, okay, this is what's going to happen. Uh, and when I work that way, I try to plan for some wiggle room. So something can change a little bit, but it's always being held in, conf in a, a confined space, which is the way I planned it. Right. Uh, maybe I just got tired of that. Occasionally there's an exception. There's one, uh, the last trio album I did, which is with you and Dave Stryker. Right. Uh, and I like that album a, a lot. I did too. But there, but there were, we never played as a trio. <laughs> not, not until we got out <laughs> on the road. So I dragged you guys to Europe. And we, were, uh, <clears throat> we were playing in clubs, but uh, there was one track uh, uh, called a piece called Jump. It was a blues. Uh, a little, little twist to it in that there's a dead stop at the end of each chorus. That's it. Other than it's just a blues. We're just kind of blowing it. I figured you'll play straight ahead. Uh, uh, Dave played a killing solo on it. And, uh, and we went in to do it. My organ track was already laid down. And I figured you're just going to play straight ahead, and you didn't. You went into this broken funk groove. Uh, I don't know how else to describe it, but it was it was like a, a funk groove, but broken, not not a straight right. thing, not like an R and B track. And I'm going, whoa, wait, but that's, oh, yeah, that's, that's that. good. <laughs> and I moved. It was just something I was going <clears> to <throat> stick on the end of the album. It ended up being first on the album. I named the album after that tune. Right. It's like you never, you never know. The uh, spontaneity of, you know, so, live musicians and and you know the conversations that yeah. we have. I think you know um, gives gives the music life and and uh, personality. I'm not I'm not saying that you cannot do that. I mean because you and I have worked together on many, many different yeah, projects. Yeah. I mean, we've gone all over the world and, and done projects with R&B, you know, all different kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, there, there's, there's a, this good and bad. There, 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 there are instances that, you know, will do well, for the other side of that, of, of you know, being everything being a production and, and mm -hmm. you know, like uh, trying things without actually live musicians or sometimes having live musicians coming over. So that all of that process is, is, you know, there's good and bad mm -hmm. with that. Um, but I think that I really do enjoy playing with live musicians, sure, like, like sure. we did on the yeah. Mobius project. Mm -hmm. More so. Yes, it was it was other. great. Huh? Yeah.